The fall of the Roman Empire for many is considered to be the end of antiquity and the beginning of the Middle Ages. The fall of the empire begins with the crisis of the 3rd century. This period saw the political fragmentation of the empire into three entities, as well as the social turmoil and chaos. Before the crisis, the empire enjoyed an era of prosperity under the Antonine dynasty, or the Five Good Emperors. But the empire suffered a series of civil wars following the assassination of Commodus. Septimius Severus took the throne and became emperor in 192, thus creating the Severan dynasty. Under the Severan dynasty, the pay of the legionaries was increased, but this increase in military expenditure caused problems for all of his successors. In 235, Roman legions were defeated in a campaign against Germanic tribes raiding across the border, while Alexander Severus was fighting against the Persians. The emperor resorted to diplomacy and paying tribute to pacify the Germanic tribes, but this cost him the respect of his troops, and the emperor was killed by his own soldiers. The legionaries proclaimed one of their commanders, Maximinus Thrax, as emperor. He became the first of the barracks emperors. Barracks emperors were rulers who were elevated by the troops without any political experience or legitimate claim to the throne. Maximinus continued the campaigns in Germania, but struggled to maintain his authority over the whole empire. In 238, a revolt broke out in Africa led by Gordian I and II which was supported by the Senate, but the revolt ended with the deaths of Gordian I and II. The Senate raised two of their own as co-emperors, Pupianus and Balbinus. Maximinus marched on Rome, but was killed by his legion, and Pupianus and Balbinus were killed by the Praetorian Guard. Numerous generals of the Roman army fought each other for control of the empire, while Roman generals were fighting each other, Rome's enemies raided into the empire's borders, Germanic tribes in the west and the Persians in the east. Climate changes and a rise in sea level disrupted agriculture in the low countries, forcing tribes in the area to migrate into Roman lands. At the same time, the plague of Cyprian broke out in 251 which caused further disruption and it weakened the empire. The empire broke into three separate political entities. The provinces of Gaul, Britain, and Hispania broke off and formed the Gallic Empire. The eastern provinces also became independent and formed the Palmyrene Empire in 267. The Roman Empire still retained much of its provinces and stayed united under a single ruler. Goths invaded Greece and Macedonia. The Emperor Claudius Gothicus defeated the invading Goths at the Battle of Nisus in 268. Claudius was able to drive back the Alemanni and recovered Hispania. Claudius Gothicus died of the plague in 270. A commander named Lucius Domitius Aurelianus or Aurelian succeeded Claudius as emperor. Aurelian defeated the Vandals, the Alemanni, and the Goths, thus securing the empire's borders. Aurelian now turned his attention east and marched against the Palmyrene Empire. The ruler of the empire, Zenobius, assembled her forces under the command of Zabdas. Zabdas and Aurelian met at the Battle of Ema in 272. Aurelian ordered his cavalry to attack the enemy and then retreat, forcing Zabdas's forces to pursue them, but it turned out to be a trap. The Romans killed the Palmyrene troops. Zenobia and Zabdas fled from the battlefield and regrouped and they fought Aurelian again 
at the Battle of Emesa, but Aurelian was once again victorious. Zenobia was taken prisoner by Aurelian. She is depicted as being paraded through the streets of Rome in golden chains. Once the Palmyrene Empire was subdued and the eastern provinces restored, Aurelian marched west to subdue the Gallic Empire. The ruler of the Gallic Empire, Postumus, was killed by his own troops in 269, and he was succeeded by Tetricus I. Aurelian decisively defeated Tetricus and his forces at the Battle of Chalons in 274. By late 274, Aurelian had successfully reunited the empire but was assassinated in 275. The crisis had a negative impact on the economy. It led to the breakdown of the eternal trade network and the old coinage system nearly collapsed. Diocletian came to power and was declared emperor in 284. His reign is considered to be the end of the crisis. He helped to stabilize the empire with his reforms. The empire's civil and military services were enlarged. The most important of Diocletian's reforms was the Tetrarchy, which divided the empire in two, with an Augustus and a Caesar to rule each half. But the system would fail shortly after Diocletian's death. In the next episode of this series on the fall of the Roman Empire, we will be talking about Constantine and the rise of Christianity. And this has been your host, Grandmaster Crusader.